last but one, officially last but one session for the first semester of 2020, 2023. What did I say, 2020? Uh, 2023. Okay, this is distance education. You are discussing our unit 10 of the UGRC 150 course, and it is group five, the Sunday group. My name is Dr. Nancy Miles Bafo Jemfi. I'm a senior lecturer of the Philosophy and Classics Department of the School of Arts, the College of Humanities, the University of Ghana, Lake And I'm glad to serve you our last unit in the course. We'll do our best to cover so much, but we'll also be very conscious of the fact that people take time to absorb content to move steadily. Let's have one of you re read the outline for us. Just raise your hand, I'll call you, then you do the video of the outline for us. Thank you very much. So, Benis can do as the honest. I see Emma Atiso or Emma Atiso and Ishmael Bubakar as well, Addis. So I'll call you, I just saw Gaston's hand as well. Let's take Benis Ajua first. Benis, go ahead. Benis, please unmute first, you're muted. If not, let's take Augustine Nyako then. Maybe Venice is having network issues. So Augustine Nyako, if you're able to unmute and go ahead. Thank you very much. Outline. Rhetorical plot and lomical, sorry. Rhetorical plot and polemical traits. Two formal fallacies. One, equivocation. Two, Begging the question. Three, appeal to force. Four, appeal to pity. Five, appeal to the people. Six, aid hominem. Seven, appeal to unqualified authority. Eight, hasty generalization. Nine, displayed vividness. 10, genetic fallacy. 11, pseudo. 11, pseudo. Don't mind me. So, let me attach to ya. Don't mind me, eh? Augustine, you see my expression when you read the pseudo position. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so the word is pseudo, okay, like psychology. Once you say psi, you say PS. Uh -huh. So it's pseudo precision. We met that word in unit seven when we saw pseudo scientific statements. It's the same thing. And then semi attached figures. Very good. These look like too many names to imbibe in a short lecture, but don't worry. By the time we finish, hopefully, you, you will get a good a good bit of the content there and they will be at peace okay just take them as people's names you can name your friends if you have children and there are five of them the first five can be your children's name in your mind eh? you won't forget them no matter how many children you have you don't forget their names easily like that you will have all 12 children then god has blessed you i will try to be i am going to the 11th and the 12th then you can just think of each one of them in your mind are uh, like your child so equivocation could be your first child your mind and you can pick them easily but better still if you understand which uh, fallacies are labeled as such then it comes easily when you see that fallacy being committed you can detect it because you learn the fallacy and you learn the label the name that the fallacy is associated with that way it, it's a better learning so we we'll work it out together i'm using a, a very comprehensive a slide from my colleague. I just pulled it from all, uh, the, the dossier we are using to teach for main campus. So our main campus is teamed up just like here. So we use different slides, put all together, and then we teach with it. Okay, so I just pulled that one. And I think we'll have good content to add to what we know. Rhetorical ploys and polemical tricks. The topic we are discussing in Unit 10 is informal fallacies informal i mean 
when we talk about formal fallacies, which we did in unit six, it talks about an error, a fallacy is an error in reasoning. I'm making a mistake. There's something wrong with how you are reasoning, how you are arguing, okay? How you are supporting a claim with evidence, okay? There's something wrong with it. That's something that is wrong with it. On my screen, please, could be as a result of the sickness number one called equivocation. You may be equivocating, or two, you may be begging the question. These are all sicknesses, they're errors. Okay? So think of it that way if you were a, a doctor. These are different types of sicknesses that people, your, your clients who come before you can have. So we are logicians. Our clients is, the, is, is about argumentation. When people try to argue, there are certain sicknesses that their, argues can, uh, their arguments can have, sorry. So equivocation, begging the question and stuff like that, that is your Instagram. Fallacies, there are sicknesses, there are errors, eh? mistakes in the way we are reasoning. But this type of diseases, see, we have sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. They are also sicknesses, but they are sicknesses of a certain group, a certain type. When we have informal fallacies, they are not the same as formal fallacies. And that's what I want to help you remember. So when we do Unit 6, we said the fallacies in Unit 6, unit six in, uh, dealt with what? Deduction and induction. Where we saw modus ponens, modus tollens, and, and, and so on. This modus ponens and co are patterns that uh, 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 someone who is arguing must follow. Deducted, we saw deduction. If the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true or a contradiction be created. That's a deduction. And then there are rules to follow to do that. When you deduce and you do it correctly, so if P, then Q. P has happened, therefore Q will follow. Modus ponens. A valid deduction simply means you are obeying the form. You are obeying the pattern, the structure of deduction. Okay, now the person who doesn't do that, I'm still talking about unit six now. Hmm? Person who doesn't deduce appropriately will commit an error, a fallacy. But that fallacy will be a fallacy of the form, an error, a mistake of what the form, you, how you should do it. That happens in deduction or Okay, so if you don't follow that pattern, you say you are committing a fallacy of the form, a formal fallacy. That's unit six. So one of them is the fallacy that affirms the anti excuse me, the fallacy that affirms the consequent, the fallacy that denies the antecedent, a false hypothetical syllogism. In fact, there is false disjunctive syllogism as well. Those are all formal fallacies, structural fallacies. Okay, but there is a structure, there's a pattern. There's a form to follow. If you don't follow that, then you commit formal fallacy. Now, in this one, we call it we call it informal. It means there isn't any pattern, let's say, that you must follow, for which we claim that you haven't followed, so you have committed an error. No, there isn't any such. So it is not a fallacy of the form. No. Okay, it is informal so there isn't any strict rule but that's one two it often occurs when we are engaging in informal discourse for instance okay so that is why they are labeled as what informal fallacies one of so they are labeled as look on my screen please rhetorical ploys a ploy and polemical tricks. Remember a trickster, wagadre. Hmm? Polemics, the person manipulates you. From, I, I tell students the polemics smacks of what? Poison, <laughs> because that's with po polemics. Hmm? The person manipulates the rhetorical ploys. The person sweet talks you, rhetoric. Sweet talk, rhetorical ploys. And the other one, polemical tricks, manipulation. So the person hasn't given you reasons, logically speaking, for which you should, for which reason you should accept or reject a claim. He hasn't done that. He has just manipulated you or kasade you, eh? sweet so talk you into accepting or rejecting. Because so it's a persuasion, a psychological. I'll look on the screen, please. I'll let your friend read for the benefit of those who may be using a phone or may just want to hear someone. You know, people don't read the same way. 
some don't have the skill of reading very well. So sometimes they don't even make out the point very well from the way they are reading. So if others read, it helps others. So I let them read shortly. But take note of the things I've said. It's a psychological inducement that sometimes people are using. We see instances. He's not giving you reasons. Oh, this man attends my church. I mean, oh, he always gives a church. He loves people. <laughs> he even stays next to my uh, my neighbor. So he's the neighbor of my neighbor. Therefore, what? Therefore, I think he can be the person. Hmm. Oh, this woman, I attended the same school with her. I'm giving instances. It's a, a psychological inducement. It's no reasons. So if people are uh, logically apt, I'm not taking in by such sense easily like that. I look at his, his picture. Be me Come on, here. photo. The other person says, Deja. I mean, it's so fine. Therefore, vote for him. Ah! It's a psychological inducement. This one comes from my hometown. <laughs> you are laughing and stuff like that. Hey, is that where she comes from? If she comes from that place, they are in trouble. Such women. Hi, which women? Those who come from here. My question to you is how many have you met? How many? When were you? You are supposed to be You see, so we'll go through them to show, to show instances where there is a manipulation. Yeah, yeah. It's a then she cheated. All those are my examples. Adwa is a girl, she also cheated. Oh, this guy has never been caught stealing before. So I don't think that he stole the money. Oh, small brain. Small brain. He has not been caught stealing. The fallacy of ignorance. He has not been caught stealing before. Therefore, he cannot steal today. He can. Today may be the first time. Or perhaps he has been stealing all this while. He just hasn't been caught. So the fact that you don't know it to be true doesn't mean it is false. And the fact that you don't know it to be false doesn't mean it is. These are all fallacies. I've given you about seven fallacies in just these few words I said. Therefore, we are going to identify such fallacies. Why do we want to? So that we can detect it as critical minds. If you are a manager, if you are a subordinate, if you work in a corporate entity at home, in the industry, wherever you find yourself, you have to be a critical mind. When you are engaging people, in addition to the content proper that you are dealing with, you have to be able to apply critical thoughts. Check, is it fallacious? Oh, this product comes from so and so place. Hey, where the original power? This one, the, oh, the other, this, oh, this one is China made. As soon as the person speaks that way, the assumption is if it is from here, there can't be any good. You see, origin, because of the origin, I accept it. Remember where they covers causal palaces? Genetic fallacy, because of where it is coming from. They are not even interested in any other thing. As we go on, you see that some of the fallacies overlap. So in attacking the person, you may be doing attacking the person is a dominant. You may be doing that, but you are attacking the person from his or her root. So it is also genetic. At the same time, ad hominem, it could be this logistic or eulogistic, like your friend tried to do. So we are going to go through those, then you use them as your working tools. Don't be taken in easily. Don't be easily convinced by things. Have reason. I tell church folks, I say, God, even God says, come, let us reason together. He didn't say, come, let us uh, be emotional. Come and let's cry. No. Brahman says, reasoning. Even after that, it means that when you come and you do it, everybody will be clear in their minds that, Charlie, my sins are red like scarlet. And then he says, even when we find that out, after our reasoning, I will wash it as white as snow. So my answer say, I say it, then you say, chill. I told you, don't do this. Oh, dog, because uh, God, because it was so and so and so, fine. But I also told you that if you have so and so reason, pass here. It didn't pass. Hey, I thought I passed. No, we didn't. So check this way. Ah, okay. Then you admit it. Now you know that you are, your sin is red as. <laughs> it's reasoning that I'm pointing out. Reasoning, because it helps to convince the guy. Don't tell the guy, if you don't marry me, then you can't work in my father's company. That's threats. He doesn't love you. If he says yes, you are in trouble for the rest of your life in that relationship. He doesn't love you. You threatened him. Yes, I didn't lift a gun at him. Or you see that I'm still on the introductory slide. But when we start reading, you should, you should get the connection. You see why 
we are discussing this from home, I said, to church or mosque, whichever religion you belong to, to the corporate world, to society, to governance, to international politics, to human relations. You have to understand where people are being equivocal. We've, we've seen equivocation in unity. So I guess I'm just waking you up on that. People can play on the use of one word, but anytime they are speaking, they are shifting from one minute to the other. And you are so convinced. Yes, equivocated basa. I'm going to ensure, for instance, let's use our very free SHS thing. Then SHS will be free for, you know, the president means well, it's a good, it's a good policy. Anyone who would critique that has a problem. But it's it's a rendition. It can move from free as in uh, you won't do anything about it to free as in oh you just do little things, but you have this for free for. So the connotation of freedom that plays around in the discourse. You have to take it takes a critical mind to point out and say, hold on, people, it's free, but you take her from your home to the place. That one. Government won't do it for you. So it is the, maybe the fees that is free, or you will give you some food, but the children can pass. You see, so equivocation can be at play there. It takes a critical mind. That's inter politics discourse. So I showed you how you can move from home all the way to the top there and still be applying these informal fallacies. Let me have a Thank you, uh, Augustine. Pella Jema, you may want to read for me. Afterwards, Ishmael can take over. Pella, go ahead. Madam, please, uh, Madam, please, the slide is not appearing on my screen. Oh, but your hand is up. Oh. So I thought yeah, to see that's it. What, that's what I want to see. Please, please can anyone see the slide that says rhetorical ploys and polemical? Yes, 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 yes. yes. It is in. Can I go on? Then you have to check your end. It might be a problem. Let me see if I can help. I'll, I'll stop sharing and reshare my lady. Okay. okay. Then, let, let's see. So I'll stop sharing now. I'm going to reshare. Let's hope it can activate your thing. If it doesn't, then you have to make an effort at I don't know if it's. Uh, They're in already. They're in already. Uh, you need to send. Okay. So when it comes, then the person who sees it can now read for me. Let me take, if Bell is not seen, then let's take. OK, Madam, I said, please, I can see. Go ahead. Go ahead, and Bell. Thank you very much. OK, then we have rhetorical ploys and polemical tricks. Yes. If the speech is designed to argue a point with the intent to manipulate the listener or reader into believing there is a legitimate basis for Dissent, but in fact provides none, then the argument is called polemic and the reasoning is described as polemical. Very good. And then sometimes we are moved to accept or reject claims based on psychological inducement. Something is said in connection with a claim that elicits or is intended to elicit. A psychological response of some sort, a desire, fear, some feelings of emotion that may well induce acceptance of the claim. Very good. So the first part where we have the polemic, okay, we call it, you see that we say is described as polemical. It is, think of polemics. I told you, think of the word poison. It manipulates you. Look, you can be manipulated into going to bring all your gold that you have hidden somewhere to a, a trickster who comes in the tag. Sorry, I'm a church person, but sorry. Who comes in the tag of a prophet or a seer? He can manipulate you or she can manipulate you big time. You would think you were convinced. You were stupefied. <laughs> no apology. So you have to have your reason alert. Manipulation is you will be pulled along into believing there is reason for you to dissent, to disagree, dissent. But in, in fact, there isn't any re reason provided. That's polemic, to disagree, okay? Then the psychological inducement that makes you think that you have good reason to accept whatever it is. Eh? So one says, ah, it's acceptance, a trickster, sweet talk. Ah, 
but have you tried, have you eaten that apple? That's what happened in the garden. Eve and the snake. And then Eve was able to also sweet talk Adam into it. You're quoting the Bible now. The tree had always been there in the garden. They walked past it many times without seeing it. My Bible said, and then after the snake said that, Eve looked at the fruit and getting some of the leaves to do flowers or something for Adam. My point is sweet talking. So take note of psychological inducements that arouse a certain sense of acceptance with you. Oh, this is what everybody is doing. Therefore, I will also do so. Remember my pony issue. I told you, as the sister goes to the salon and says, please, can you put my pony? I'm going to do my work, but I want my pony on my forehead. The beautician wants to do it. She can do that. But she said, why? So, oh, but that is what everybody is doing now. You have been psychologically induced into believing that what everybody is doing, it is good. Everybody may be doing it for a reason. I said it in unit one when I was doing introduction. Find the reason. That is what should be your inducement. Not the psychological fact that everyone is saying, like, hey, hey. everybody is running towards the gate. So you start running with them. Without knowing where they are going. Sometimes on the way, if you are lucky, some wake up and say, ah, why are we running? I don't know. I see say them they run. So I feel say I for join them. Only baby or could be a good direction. It's also following, following. Until they get to no man's land, before they realize, ah, but why were we running? You have to ask for it. So that is a psychological inducement towards acceptance. Whereas the earlier one is what? A certain manipulation that makes you dissent, dislike it. When it is actually perhaps good, the person hasn't offered any reason. Okay, so informal fallacies. Remember, I talked about patterns or structures of arguments which make purely logical mistakes. The ones, these ones are the ones we call what formal fallacies. When there is a form and you disagree to the form, then it will commit what a formal fallacy. That's what affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent and the others that we saw is the correct form should affirm the antecedent. You don't affirm the consequent. So we saw that if you go and affirm the consequent, rather, you commit a formal fallacy and the others. This one, which we call informal fallacy, I've said all this, so I'm now showing you the slide that has the specific content. Okay. The informal fallacy says errors and mistakes, which they are what? Errors and mistakes which have to do with what? The content of inductive argument, effective argument that often use rhetorical plots. That's what we are doing. So you are trying to argue, or you haven't given us what? Legitimate grounds. You're either inducing us or you are manipulating. Hey, what's the other one? You're either inducing or manipulating or what? Uh, uh, sweet talking us. Eh? You're applying rhetoric. That's how I teach students that one. Okay. Kinds of informal fallacies. Look at the screen. Fallacies of relevance. Fallacies of weak induction. Don't worry about all these plenty things. Eh? Fallacies that manipulate language and statistics. You see, the, the specific fallacies are the ones we showed you on the first slide I projected. I intentionally projected on the first slide to show you all the 12 or so fallacies. What we have done here on this slide is to show you how you may want to group them. Maybe you can say bacteria, fungi, virus, but they are all infections. Okay, so they are all fallacies, informal fallacies at that. But we can have the fungi infection, we can have a virus infection or a bacterial infection. If so, then within those 12 informal fallacies highlighted, some are labeled as what fallacies that have to do with the relevance of the premise to the conclusion. Sometimes you want to say, ah, you are committing a fallacy because the premise you are offering is irrelevant to the conclusion. And funny, huh? so even if we took the premises to be true, it doesn't lead us necessarily to the conclusion. Or perhaps the premises is saying something totally different from the conclusion you are drawing. So we will label that specific fallacy, which will have a name, okay, under the group called what? Viruses, called fallacies of relevance. So HIV, for instance, 
will be the particular name of the sickness, but it is a virus. So it is inside a set of virus. COVID-19, I'm told, is also a virus. So HIV and COVID-19 are two separate particular sicknesses, okay? But they belong to the group of infections called viruses. If you got that, then we can also have another set of particular, you know, diseases, but they will not be viruses. They will be what? Maybe bacteria or the third one, they will be fungi. If you got that, then that is what we are doing. So within the fallacies of relevance, those particular fallacies up there, the first 12, may have members that belong there. What crime then makes us call all of them fallacies of relevance? Just as remember HIV and COVID-19, we call both of them viruses, but they are not the same. How you get COVID-19 is not how you get HIV, generally speaking, okay? And so on and so forth. Yet we can, in certain sense of it, put them together in one box and call them viruses. That's what we are doing. So fallacies of relevance may include some specific fallacies up there. Okay, they are not the same, but they belong to a certain grouping. It means all those two fallacies, or three fallacies, or four of them that we call fallacies of relevance, are doing something in their premises. That will make us say their premises are irrelevant to the conclusion they are drawing. The person is trying to argue, but how he, he offers premises to support the conclusion smacks of what? Irrelevance. That's why we call them fallacies of re relevance, okay? That's what you see on your screen, where premises are not logically relevant to the conclusion. It changes the subject. So if you look at my slides, which is also there, it tells you fallacies that change the subject are oftentimes placed under what? fallacies of relevance. If we are talking about A, and you are coming to give reasons, but you shift the reason to something else, we'll say what you are saying is irrelevant to this discussion. The fact that someone comes from, for so example, appeal to the masses, the fact that plenty of people are following something doesn't say, therefore, that it is good or bad in itself. Plenty of people can fo follow garbage, OK? They can follow garbage content. So it's not the following that makes the thing right or wrong. You have to have that all the time. Look at our democracy worldwide. People, plenty of people go and follow a position, supposedly. The next four years, plenty of people say, hi, hey, we made a mistake. <laughs> Sometimes people can wait for four years to change their, their own choosing that they made. They can't wait, they screw it up. Because what plenty of people say must not necessarily mean the thing is correct. I like the way the class is very good. I've not disabled any mic, but I'm amazed. Well done. You will get a lot. So please. Thank you, madam. You are welcome, Auntie. So the fallacies that change the subject. Thank you, madam. You, they are showing that they are what? Irrelevant. And so if you know that, as soon as I start mentioning specific uh, fallacies that change the subject. You can easily say, ah, that's why we say that it's a fallacy. What we find wrong with them is that they are shifting, they are diverting our attention from the discussion. They are talking about the brother, whether he qualifies for the job or not. Then you are telling his brother is there. Hey, let's use someone else. Hey, the, the, the brother is the president. His brother is the president. So you are diverting our attention from content. When you do that, it can psychologically induce us who make the decision based on qualification. You see, that's the problem. The people are competing for presidency. Then you say, oh, this one is too short. That short man cannot be. When you say that, I mean, and it happened in Ghana, it's a psychological inducement. You are diverting our attention from the matter to circumstances about the person. That's what we call attacking the person. So it is a fallacy that changes the subject. And therefore, it is what? A fallacy bordering on what relevance. See the connection. So that no matter how the question is asked, you can answer. If I asked you instances of virus STDs, you can give one. But if I say instances of viruses, uh, you know, infections that are as a result of a virus, you will know that you can bring COVID-19 there. And you can back COVID-19 is not an STD. Yet HIV is an STD, but it's also a virus. You see, so the interconnectedness. What I'm showing you, fallacies are relevant, fallacies that change the subject. The second one is fallacies of weak induction, another grouping. So think of this as bacteria, which is also an infection. I said earlier, 
but a bacterial infection is not a viral infection. Neither are the two a uh, fungal infection. If it's fungal, you may want to take a, a spread stuff. If you are taking, you take antifungal <laughs> to heal it. If you go and take a viral, you know, or whatever to, to cure this one, it won't go. They are not the same. The same with fallacies of weak induction are, are what? Fallacies where the premises have done what? The premises, I want to mute everybody. Someone is talking to spoil our nice after we have muted him. Where the premises are relevant to the conclusion, yes, see that? See how it differs from the first one. The first one is a question where there isn't any relevance. I didn't even So some even call it fallacies of irrelevance, but instead of fallacies of relevance, okay? The fallacies of weak induction clearly tells you here the premise is relevant to the conclusion. It is connected to it, but they do not support the conclusion in the way intended. So either it is not enough. So you see history generalization, you see, and, and stuff like you see them there. Why? Because the evidence you are proffered, it's not enough, for instance. So it may be good reason. You are giving reasons that are connected to the conclusion. But we would think that, okay, even if we grant it, we don't have all that we need to do uh, to draw the conclusion we address. So the induction is weak. Remember, we learned induction. There's strong induction, there is weak induction. In both cases, even if all the premises are true, it does not necessarily mean the conclusion will be true. That is why it's induction. But we can have a strong induction where we say most Ghanaians like pineapple. Our lecturer is a Ghanaian. So she likes pineapple. See, I said most. So if it were true that most Ghanaians like pineapple, and it was also true that my lecturer is a Ghanaian, then it must be true that she likes pineapple. This is a strong induction. It has a high probability of truth. Because I said most. And this, uh, the second premise affirms it, if you like. Then the conclusion is likely, has a high chance of what being true. It is not certain, but it has a higher degree. That's a strong induction. But a weak induction would have been, if I said, few Ghanaians like pineapple. My lecturer is a Ghanaian, so she too will like pineapple. You said few. Few, yeah, no, there's a chance of something is less. Chances, are prob the probability is relatively low. So it will be a weak induction. So if you have a weak induction, then the reasoning is likely to be what? Uh, fallacious, fallacy. So you see history generalization there, I think. Then the third one, still on the kinds, the categorizations of informal fallacies, okay? Fallacies that manipulate language and statistics. They manipulate the language. Tweak it here, tweak it here. So you are speaking, remember secularity? Oh, he's moral because he's really living morally upright life. I'm so amazed <laughs> he said nothing. Huh? He, 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 we will develop the nation. What do you mean by develop? Oh, we we'll make sure that, that we build a you know, developmental project, construct development. I don't know who person would say in development, but all your explanation is already using the very thing we want you to explain. Have you helped us? Okay, so you are only manipulating to be to develop. Ebe tumpon se, ebe elshosi tu 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 tumpon. Elshosi ya isi simpon tu juma. All you are saying is repetition of Mpuntu, which we are trying. To, what does it mean for a nation to be developed? I'm an anchor, a news anchor. I want to, or oh, eh, eh, you know, eh, friends say, I'm the host of an a talk show. I want to know what do you mean when you say development? Because you want to pursue that one. <laughs> So when I ask you what is development, so oh, development is to develop the nation back on developmental project to ensure that the nation is developed by the developed nations. It's a manipulation of language, you told me. Maybe this one, I've made it so explicit because I'm repeating the development tour. Some say it in a way that you don't see. That's what a critical mind sharpens their what, tools to be able to see through. That's what we are doing. Okay, so those fallacies, manipulate the language and they also manipulate the data, the statistics. So there is evidence, but the evidence is not connected to the conclusion how something is being done. A forcing, you know, I think you have, maybe history generalization can belong here too because we have put statistics together. We'll see, okay? You are manipulating the data to do something for you that it cannot do. All right. 
fallacies to do with how we use language, mathematics, or data to deceive others to accept our claims. The social scientists, please watch that. When the, let's remember what Dr. Baumia said. <laughs> when the, uh, Debe Debe is the, the fundamentals are not right, the, whatever I would expose. If you use wrong data, you'll be exposed. Critical minds, we are let, and all of us listening would find me at developing our critical abilities. No critiquing abilities, so they are not the same. There are people who criticize, no. Critical thinking, critically analyzes. It's not the same as critiquing. They're not the same. Critique means you are finding what is wrong with it. Sometimes for improvement, sometimes it's not. Sometimes just to show that they didn't know, which is not a good thing. If you show what is wrong, we have to have a, an option. So then it should be what? A critical examination. Critical means you take yourself out look at the matter objectively and raise questions where you can raise it and propose solutions or responses. That's critical analysis. But critiquing or criticizing smacks up negativity all the time. That's the difference. So we are developing a critical ability. Sometimes people send me a message, Doc, I've, to, I've said something, okay. Then they say that, oh, Doc, please, this one there, if you reopen it for me, then, oh, oh, I don't know if I submitted the work. Ah, so are you asking me to know if you submit the work or not? Ask yourself those questions. You see that you even say it. Once I do it, let me let the time go. I hope that maybe this woman cry the 20 point to be bonus or something. And look ahead for the AT coming. Because if I'm able to clock 76 grams per meter, ah, I'm gone. That one is still there. You are brooding over what is lost, quote and unquote, that maybe you haven't lost. You can't do anything about it. The guy, Johnny Bravo, broke your heart. He's gone. He has prayed for forgiveness, oh, and God has given him a beautiful woman. He has a beautiful home. You are still brooding over Johnny Bravo. God has forgiven him. You to forgive him and go on. If you can't forgive, forget him. But go on. You see, go on because otherwise, what can be the original? You say, hey, this guy, no doubt God will deal with him. God has forgiven him. He on the body check. Forgives. That's why you must forgive your own self for going for Johnny Bravo, Sister Ajua, and move. You carry yourself and move like this and go on. It's critical analysis. It's not even Bible yet. You are sitting there crying. The guy has left with your money. If he's a trickster, he has taken the money. If you cry, the money is not coming. But if you use, you cry a little, clean your face, and pick whatever is left, and start selling your oranges more soon. Before you knew it, you have gained that money back. This time, you know how to hold it well so that Atalutu doesn't come and do, I love you, I love you, and collect it from you. We need to. But you are sitting there crying. Uh, I'm speaking figuratively. You're not physically crying. The person is still saying, ah, me, pipe, it wasn't that my uncle that took my father's book. Now, this is not my life. The way I knew my say, well, no, 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 So when you knew mass and the wafa came to take it, I'm talking about critical ability. Then you connect it to the content. Because these are the things I ask. I want you to use it. Use the ideas. Not that kind of vocation. This is, oh, very uh, uh, secularity. No, use them. See, I move from politics. I go to church a little. I come here. The social, the relationship. Because you need to use the critical thinking for practical reasons. So these things should wake you up overnight and say, why? Like the prodigal son, come to yourself and say, ah, me cry, why? Why am I doing this to myself? If I go home, I have lands there. I should go and start some farming. I come to Accra. Then I go here. This guy will use me a little. This man will use me a little. This sister will use me a little. You use, use, ah. Then they drop me today. No. You go to this work. You work too much. They won't pay you. They know this. If I go home, I can start a two-acre land farm and do corn and corn. And now with my connections in Accra, come and look for people that will use it for popcorn or something. I'm going back home. Then maybe go and start with prayer hard work. It will change. Before long, big men and women are calling, please, we, are, we don't have corn. We don't have corn for our so-and-so. If you don't give us land, then you now call the shot. What you want to wish to sign? And you are wearing white shirt and black tie every day, convincing everybody. But you know that inside, it is your sock. Your socks is one of your sweaters. You are not a critical thinker. Apply it. Okay. So here we are. The first specific fallacy we will learn is what equivocation. 
you have met it already. The examples on your screen, you're even familiar with this. Let me have one of you read that. I'll take a sip of water. So I'll take a case and points. Another could you be on standby? Case, go ahead. Yes, I can hear you now. Please, I can't see the screen. Hey, you ready? And look at you, please. Can you see the screen? And look at you, can you see the screen? Okay, let's have Natalie. Yeah, I will share it there. Keep watching. I will share it so that it will be easier for you. Natalie, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Natalie, right? You want me to say it? Natalie. Yeah, Natalie. Please unmute and mute. It might be her network. Uh, I, I suspect so. Natalie, please unmute and read. If not, let's take. Please, I don't want us to waste too much time, okay? So if Natalie is also having challenges, then I'll Another take. Sorry, Another Another could you go ahead. Thank you very one. much. Uh, go ahead. All if right. you can see, then please read. Okay. Okay. Vocation. The use of more than one connotation of a word in the same context without hey my brother do you read bbc news or something you have a nice voice <laughs> go ahead sir okay the use of more than one connotation of a word in the same context without any signal of the shift with the intention to manipulate or to persuade is called equivocation yes sir <laughs> madam okay I read your bbc <laughs> but I don't know where I one way. <laughs> one way. You can come and come over. Say, please read the example. Mm, me know who you are. In your gown, we don't know where I know. <laughs> Go ahead, say. The example, say. Oh, dear. I hope I didn't have a network issue. Hmm. Okay, so says reading takes us to. The example there, we, we've met equivocation, so you see that I'm not giving too much attention to it. Just remember. Yeah, my, 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 my screen has gone off, so. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. So I can continue from there. So the inter interviewer, in this job, we need someone who is responsible. That's what the interviewer is saying. We've said this in, in a thread weeks ago. No, the applicant says, oh, if you are looking for a responsible person, then I'm the one you are looking for. In my last job, every time anything went wrong, they said I was responsible. That is the problem. The responsible that the interviewer is using, the word responsible that the interviewer is using, is not the word responsible or the meaning responsible that the applicant is referring to. One word, but it has different meanings. And so if you are not careful, you will think you are saying the same thing just because you are repeating the same words doesn't mean we are arguing about the same thing. What is arising from that? Because one word can have different connotations. If you keep, if you keep using the same word, but whenever you use it, you change from one of its meanings to the other, you will, say, you will become uh, accused of what? Committing equivocation. Example four does that. Example four does that. Look at example two, happiness is the end of life. The end of life is death. Therefore, happiness is death. Look at that. <laughs> happiness is the end of life. The end of life is death. Therefore, happiness is this. This looks like a, a, a modus. What? A modus. Okay, a fallacy that affirms the entire hypothetical syllogism of a, of a kind. But it is not. It is equivocal. All right. There was one that had something to do with gay. I, I, I don't see it here. They said the children are gay, but it is wrong to. Uh -huh. yeah, that's it. I want to have example three. Those who can see, look on my screen. I want to have myself a merry little Christmas, but I refuse to do as the song suggests and make the Yuletide gay. I don't think sexual preference should have anything to do with enjoying the holiday. You see that this gay, the word gay that is used there is happiness. Yuletide. The, the happiness of the Yuletide, when we are having that festive occasion, the happiness, the gay. So this is not gay as in, uh, you know, people with special preference that we, we I don't know how to say it, male, male, male relation. Okay, so the, this person arguing is mixing the word gay as 
an enjoyable, happy time with the word gay as what? A sexual preference where men have something to do with men in that sense of it, okay? So I want to have myself a merry little Christmas, but I refuse to do as the song suggests and make the youth tide gay. I will not make that festive occasion a gay one. You see, see the ambiguity there. Uh -huh. As a result of the equivocation, when you are equivocal, you will create different meanings in the minds of the one listening. That's ambiguity. So the, the one listening can hear it this way or that way. We saw that earlier. Okay, free turkey. I say we should free the nation turkey or we should come for free turkey meat. So free turkey available for us to eat or we should set the bed turkey which is stuck in the hook, hook uh, the hen coop over there for that example we had there, yeah. So as a result of what? The ambiguity, it gives different meanings in the minds of the one hearing. So we are saying that this is an instance. The person said, I don't want to make the you tied a gay one. Because why should sexual preference interfere with the celebration of a holy, if you like, a festival? The gay day, which comes with the celebration of Christmas, when we say, I'm going to be gay during the Yuletide, is gay as in I'm going to be happy. Look it up in the dictionary and see. That's equivocation. Very good. The second one is begging the question. You know it already. It has other names. Secular reasoning, petitio principle is a Latin expression for it. I said all that in the past, and I've showed you the development example. You are trying to argue, but you use the very premises, premises are the evidence, uh, in the conclusion. So it's, you are going in circles. Think about it very well because before I give you an example. You start from somewhere, and the one that I'm going to give you is the one that may offend you, but don't worry. God hasn't asked you to defend him. <laughs> That's why he's God. The Bible says that God is this example too. The Bible is true because God wrote it. Therefore, God exists. Look at it very well. You want to say that God exists. We ask you, for instance, why do you say so? Because the Bible is the word of God. Can you see the secularity? You use God to prove the quality, or if you like, the authenticity of the Bible. You say, because the Bible is the word of God, then it is authentic. Don't worry your head at all. You are speaking with someone who believes in the Bible with all her life and her breath. That is what has made me who I am. <laughs> but when you look at the logic of it, this reasoning commits the fallacy of secularity. It is difficult to prove the existence of God, with our human ability. That's why God wants you to do it with him. Let him reveal himself to people. You can only send the word and go if you're a Christian. That is, eh? if you're another religion, however you are convinced about it, do it that way. But you can't know God the way you know your two plus three or the way you know your malaria and you look for uh, Akubam too. <laughs> no, the day we know God that way, he will cease to be God because he has to have an unanswerable aspect of him, immortal, invisible, God only wise, almighty, uncreated creature. Everything else is a creation. That being we call God is the creator. How can you know the, the unfathomable being like that? So you see that we will struggle. Sometimes we use creation to point to the creator. We see if we have such magnificent, you know, awesome world with such intricate design and purpose and organization, ah, there has to be a master brain behind. That's a cosmological argument. It has weaknesses, just like this. So I'm just showing that the difficulty any logical mind, any human mind for that matter, will encounter trying to prove God. You will have to use something and it, that thing, veracity would point you back to God. Why should we accept what that thing is? You will point it back to God. That's secular. And that's what is happening here. So God exists, for example, as you, ah, who told you that God is? You say, oh, the Bible said so. The person tells you, but the Bible is a history book. Oh, some colonizers book that they came to use to colonize. Why should I believe what the Bible said? Then you say, oh, no, don't think of the Bible. That, the Bible is the word of God. Remember, God himself, our creator. You are trying to show or prove that's the problem. That he exists. Then you are going to use him to now guarantee the, the, the 
authenticity of the Bible. He himself, we are trying to prove his existence now. You use the Bible. You see what I'm showing you? Yes, that's the secularity there. If you use the Bible, the person says, why should I believe the Bible? Why shouldn't I believe uh, the history tells me? Mm? You say, no, no, no. The, the Bible's authority there, it is not from man. Where is it from? It's from God. Ah, but God is the one we don't know if he exists or not. You see that we are back. Uh -huh. That's a typical example of secularity. If you want to convince, especially people whose heart, heart is hardened, do your money, Mahashatada Bahaya, if you believe in that. And go and present the word as you are led. If you are told, don't talk, don't talk. Because it's not you who does the conviction. I'm speaking now to a few, a few in the set. If it is crusade that you do, do. if it is a, a, those who are Hare Krishnas or something, whatever you do, do that. But I don't think you can go and use human logic. I'm talking about human reason to convince a hard hearted, but the heart must already be softened by the one who created the heart. He knows what to soften that person. There are some people with sickness, people that must catch them. And now they are hard to be soft enough to hear God as <laughs> there are others. Nothing. God himself will have to show himself in a certain way to them. When a person is convinced that way, it's not your secularity that you can't use to. It, that one will convince, especially a, a mind that, or a heart that is already what it is. So all those uh, elaborations just to help you understand secularity, which is also called what? Begging the question. So excuse me, so it's several names, also called what, petitio, look at it very well, respectfully, petitio principi, okay, and we move on, so we've seen equivocation, we've seen begging the question, and I'm doing so patiently, people who lack humility have no sense of beauty, because everyone who has a sense of beauty also has humility, that's secular, we want to round, the because, when you see because, eh, we are expecting you to give the reason, not to repeat the same thing, the one I just said is the one that, and then the corrected version is there for you to review. Okay, so we move on to a third fallacy. And that says, appeal to force. You can tell immediately. When, when you see the fallacy, you know where to place it. Some overlap, like we've always seen from day one. Okay, some overlap. So it is attacking the person and it's also genetic in nature. It commits the two coke fallacy. You are also another. Say you are a thief. You are talking about my me a thief. You do a thief. You and I and I we are the same. That's two cook. You are another. So you and I are the same. Now it is a two cook fallacy, but also attacking the person. So I'm showing you just instances where there can be overlaps. That is why you do. I can be. Uh, excuse me. The the disease can be a virus and also an STD at the same time. If you need to. So you don't think that when you go and find viruses, all viruses. Uh, virus disease or viral diseases must necessarily be STD. No. Okay. So they are interconnectedness. And I wanted to point that out. Now to the third fallacy. Appeal to force. This one is simple. You are not giving reasons why the person should do that. You know. You are forcing the person. I just told you. The sister tells you, I think you must marry me. I think it's in this slide. Let me see. Look at its Latin expression. Argumentum ad baculum. Ba, baculum. Those who want to do law, or you have some, you know, if your child or something wants to do law, you'll see this, scare tactics. Mm -hmm. You use the consequences to tell the person, look, better support this man. Otherwise, when you finish, we won't get job to do. You won't even have classmates, let alone job. We are all following him and doing job to be because of job. That's threat. <laughs> you are threatening the person. He just didn't lift a knife, but it is implicit. It's implied threat. The person has to do because job is the reason why we are always school. Maybe we don't know how to do my hair. We are not convinced by reason that this is a good policy. You are not. I just to obey to obey. Because you have been threatened. Some brother be saying yes, sir, yes, sir to the sister. Or some sister be saying yes, sir, yes, sir to the brother. Because if not, the sister will leave the relationship and he won't get the job. The sister told him, if you don't. Continue a relationship, then count this your political career squashed. My father will support you. That's <laughs> that's by false law. Coercing you to believe or accept a conclusion by shifting the focus away from the belief or conclusion's veracity and instead drawing attention to what will happen to you if you don't believe or accept it. That is what appeal to force. Look at its many names. It's appeal to threat. 
argumentum ad baculum, appeal to fear, appeal to consequences, scare tactics, they are all referencing the same. Okay, so some examples. Let's have uh, someone read for me. I think I still see my two hands up. Let's see if uh, Beatrice is able to read for me. If you are on standby for me, Beatrice, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Example one. Lately, there has been a lot of negative criticism of our policy on dental benefits. Let me tell you something, people. If you want to keep working here, you need to know that our policy is fair and reasonable. Anybody working here who doesn't know this will have to let go. <laughs> I think it's explicit. If you don't believe that, look, cool. the people work with you. Let them be. Let them be sincere with you. Eh? People don't like sincerity. It can be here. It can be sincerity in love, but the person has told you the truth. The way you are behaving, it, yeah, brother, is not good. Don't say, hey, you have to support me. I'm your brother. Support. You are stealing. He said he should support you. Hey, Jai. Okay, so these people are working. They say if you don't believe in a policy on dental benefits, like an insurance company or something, then you have to leave. You work with us. We will think our own is if you don't believe in it, then you have to ah. You have to leave. Then I'll, I'll believe in it. I believe. I believe in it with everything. <laughs> with everything inside me. Because my children must see that I believe. Why do you threaten people? That person, the day she gets another source of living, you will see how your company will be exposed. I had one in one of the uh, whatever uh, social media platform recent times. A very embarrassing matter. Don't force people. Let people reason with you. The secretary, I finished typing this thing before 12. I use that example all the time. Those who play my recordings, are the, you know, I'm repeating some. Finish typing, is this, madam, or the boss to the secretary, the typist. Finish typing those letters before 12 p.m. Otherwise, consider yourself fired. Look at that. Boss, post, kakra, okudie. Small post you've got. Finish typing before 12 p.m., eh? Otherwise, consider yourself fired. Then he steps out. The, the sister will be typing like a machine. Why? The child is at school. She can't even call Madame and say, please, can you drop the, the baby here? When I finish everything, we'll go home. I have to finish up something. She can't even remember that she has a child. Why is she an animal? Talk to people. Reason with them. I said, God said, come, let us reason together. You will make a better impact, I'm telling you, than when you are there all bossy. So those who are already in corporate entities but are just doing this for top up, just to check their health. I said, I told her this, some, some people are here, they don't need this thing to be out. So when you are following the crowd, shine your eyes. And people who are born in Bravia, it's already established. This is just to, for fulfillment. Huh? So if you get F in change, he can come again, he can even have stop and come and pay school fees again. You too. But mommy removed the hairs in their nose. <laughs> Mommy, I didn't even or you yourself. You have worked hard. Make it count. That was appeal to threat. Uh, excuse me, appeal to the masses. I'm coming back to the front. Listen, let people tell you the truth. Because that secretary, if she knows that, oh, Auntie, this is our job. Yeah, we have to get it done before 12. You know, we have to finish the presentation, we put it all together. So we we'll win the bid. If you finish that one, actually, we are we are in good business. Are you on, on with us? You say, oh, I'll do my best. It's reason. Oh, reason. This lady can even stay over time. Get the baby, do some soakings for the child there, and continue with the work to them because she wants to make the boss happy. Positively happy, of course. Make her the boss, because the boss is working with her like a human being. If she got a new appointment somewhere, she could tell them, oh, can I start on Monday? Maybe it's a bigger offer, better conditions. But she doesn't want to, um, eh, in, in three, that she doesn't want to disappoint you that, that much because you have put so much confidence in her. And people do that, they give confidence, uh, confidence and they go and, uh, and you know, uh, what's the expression, Kwa? You know, put us to shit. The boss, oh, my secretary is there. And then you are sitting there chewing, chewing. And, and checking the kinetic load that they brought. 
when he's expecting that you finish, so also why not? Next time you let the boys become like an animal. <laughs> if you don't do it, when the father is coming from the junction, the home is like cemetery. Why, Papa? You don't want your children to love you. From the junction, the children should be running towards you. You should whistle at the junction. Then your children with their, uh, you know, playing things come and rub it in your shirt and make your dress dirty. Yes, that's why mommy said they wash it. Not appeal to threats. Look, Kwame Pradem who sweep the room. Ochembae, Ochembae, your father is coming. Yo, if you don't sweep the room, I will show you who will give you food this evening. Oh, that. That's the reason why you sweep the room. Then I'll buy food today. I've done Ajana one, Ajana two, I have my money. Then the sweeping there, you lie. I finish. He didn't show the child the reason why he should bath. You showed him that if he doesn't bath, we will show him who will give him food. So why now he's in SHS? That the food you already gave him for the whole time, plenty. Chateau, Serilac, Ediebe, conflicts. <laughs> what is bathing? And there's no need for bathing. When they come, you see the armpits, <laughs> the crawl, the eczema all over. The... Teach the child the reason why. Teach him, he will know. If you are there, he will, you will inspire him to do more. If you are not there, he will be led by that. Don't use threats. Okay, so I used all those examples from practical relevance. We gave you so many. Johnny, of course, I deserve the use of your bicycle for the afternoon. Still an appeal to force. So it's Saturday. <laughs> as soon as you finish, I collect the bike. You can, you can ride it the whole day. Tomorrow to come for you, ride it. Because the person threatened you implicitly. Okay, and then the one I have referenced earlier. Example for still an appeal to threat. We have done equivocation, begging the question. We are just doing the third one. You see, I'm not rushing. So many examples. Wherever we get to, we'll pause. By the grace of God, we'll be alive. Me, you know, I'll be alive. If I know I, I ended at the fourth one, the exams will be on the fourth one. We can't ask you what we didn't engage. But we won't rush to. No. And finish. Then we know we have finished. And then what? Who are you going to? <laughs> will you give us the key to heaven? No, we want you to know something. That is useful. That's the target. All right. So we'll do it soon. So we're on the third one. So equivocation first, circularity next, and then we are doing appeal to force. The last example. Look at it. Either you marry me right now. Acquire <laughs> a desperate sister. Then you beat her. We are the last born of God. Women. We are the last born. Every woman anywhere. It is not... Uh, asking for uh, sameness. That makes you a woman. No. I told my philosophy student, till 417, I met them days ago. I think it was Friday. I told them, look, we're doing something on eco-feminism, you know, the feminist argument for preserving the environment. They are a bit intertwined. I said, don't go arguing to be the same like a man. The fish is not a bed, and the bed is not a fish. Finito. Argue for what? Equitable treatment. If you like someone to call it equal, to, I'm a philosopher, so I'm a little conscious of what equal, equitable, same. You know, we have to diagnose them well before you use it. Same as bad Oh, male. Oh, boy. It's a lie. Women and men are not the same. A man is not the same as us. No, we have kappa. We nurture it. You give me some bola inside. When I roll it inside there and cook it and nurture it and roll back the bola, you'll be amazed. It will come extra light, pressed down, shaking together, <laughs> running over. That's what women give back. Women receive. Look at the natural makeup. Look at the body. This is a, an adult class, so I can teach. Look at the way the body of a woman is. I'm showing you example four. No? Why it is a threat. And I'm linking it to practical life. Critical thinking and practical reasoning so that the thing makes sense to the person and useful for life. That's why I go there. Look at the makeup, look at a woman's body, and look at a man's body. One gives, it's taking out like that. Boom. Apologies, eh? The other one is a whole, it receives. That's how God made it. You can't change it. So sameness pie is a joke. The, so the eco-feminist argument, the woman is like the earth. The earth receives what you put in and gives it back to you. You put in garbage, garbage out. In nature's sense. So we call the earth as a sea. When you watch Captain Planet, 
there will be adults among you. The woman in that Captain Planet, when the five planets Kwame and Ku join their forces, Captain Planet comes. The woman is Gaia. Those who have watched Captain Planet, you know, Gaia is a woman. She represents the earth. She will come and say, I'm hurting. Someone is polluting, pouring some dirty, maybe even to a river over there. Go and stop him. Go and then they let her powers come. Gaia is a woman. When you watch Moana, you know, that cartoon called Moana, please, you can just find it. Medicine got it. Mm. When the, your, your children are watching the cartoons, come and sit and watch it. <laughs> you see the mother, nature, eh? which had called itself and was lying there. When it, she raises herself, she's a woman, nature. What's my point? Woman, you are honorable. You receive it. God says the man should love the woman. Women can love. They don't give love. When you say it, people say, hey, it's figurative. You can, if you are giving love, it is love that you have received. That's what you are giving back. God says, woman, receive the love, submit and receive it. How can you receive something when you have turned your hand to give? You can't receive. The man gives love. Masculinity is in giving love. Love will overlook so many. So when you go, back to my example now, and you go and tell a man, <laughs> Dr. Is a day. some of his examples are funny, but they are really, really rich. Look at, he says, either you marry me right now, or I'll be forced to leave you and never speak to you again. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't want me to do that. Therefore, you will marry me right now. The other one said, either you marry me right now, the one my slides, I think, or you can't work in my father's company when you finish with your national service. Hey, Gagana, no job. A desperate woman is forcing herself. I said, you receive. It doesn't mean you can't give more. You only give what you receive. When they give you some small water that is sticky, called spam, apologies, eh? I'm teaching an adult class. Some few months after you nurture and you know grow it and care and love, what you will produce is a human being with bones. Sometimes two, sometimes three. God granted me one. So I have twins in addition to the two boys. I'm showing you something. What they gave me was some small drop of water that teaspoon can maybe or not. But it that's woman. So you should have that in mind. You receive love. Don't be masculine. Don't advocate. So the feminist, uh, you know, argument. I want to use that to tell you. I don't know the discipline you are in. Present our argument at the places that matter. Equal treatment, at least equal meaning that. Give us what? Recognition for what we are. I'm a fish. Respect my water. Because if you drain the water, I'm dying. I'm not a bed. So don't think because bears are okay without the water, you can spoil where I thrive as a fish. That's the argument you make. You don't go and say, look at the way you are flying in the air. If you want to fly some, you are a fish. When they take you up in this, into the sky as a fish, you will what? You will die off. If you like, bring the bed into the fish and uh, the water and let's see whether it will survive. So you will try. So I want clean water. I'm speaking figuratively, metaphorically. We learned metaphors. Clean my water. That's your argument. Please, I don't want the sun directly hitting my water. That means maybe give us maternity leave or give women, you know, so the women you should bring them to the fore. There's a lot of discrimination. Yes, work on that. I don't go and say, so we have to be like the bed. They will quickly say, come. When you hear that there's a snake in your house, then you now say, hey, I'm a man, bro. I'm a man, bro. <laughs> Which of them I should come? I don't know the one that is the same like the man. Then go and kill the snake. They are calling Mema. Mema means men. Where are men? I, I don't know men here. Oh, my brother, please, can I join the queue? That's a sister who wants to jump in the queue to buy her food quickly because the weather has changed. And she's the only girl in the queue. Really? What men can do? Women can do better. Why are you not? Uh, we want to jump the queue. So that argument, a critical mind, doesn't help us. Argue that where a woman's place is, give her that recognition. If I work on merit and attain a place. Don't come and say, mommy, panty, because if I'm the president, you will call me uh, his excellency. Man. If she's a woman president, she's her excellency. So, so, so. don't say, uh, mommy, don't come and give that. That respect is fanfare. 
she earned her places, Professor Nana Abba, appear and for now referring to her vice chancellor. Was not that that time because she's a woman professor. Uh, oh, mommy, please. Uh, I know it's respect and love, but recognize the the what has been attained. That one is married or a woman with men and got it. It is different from when she she's playing uh, her role as a mother. So I'm a doctor that I am. I'm a senior lecturer, soon to be professor. Amen to that. Her, huh. you don't say amen. <laughs> amen. 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 That one is attained. Respect the office. Then the place that is her motherly affection, where if she's not careful, she will cry in public because she's emotional. She receives. So the pain all around, she, she absorbs it. That's woman. Beautiful quality that God brought to help a man. When the pain is all around, the woman will absorb the pain. Because we see, and the brother is still standing there, yeah, strong. But oh boy, when he enters the room, it's a woman that bears the pain. That's woman. So a woman cannot go, and I'll end with that on this example, then we we'll move on. Someone will read for me. A woman cannot go tell him, my one worry me up. One worry me, come me home. And he won't tell me, me. Okay. What I said is in cheese is just a, an entertainment for you, okay? You have to have pride. Pride in your woman. Don't try to be a man. You are not that. You are you. Strong, not weak, okay? You are not, you are not daft. You are a woman. You can so that a man can be a man. Masculine. And give. Give you attention. Give you love. Give you, not only relationships. I'm talking about even the office. When you are a boss there, the corporate office is there. That's what I've told everyone. We have to respect that. As soon as you start crying, even the car, they open it for you. You see, receive that. Don't say, no, 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 I don't want anybody to say, please, this is my woman. A whole and a stick. Always remember that. Very good. So move on to appeal to pity now. What else? What one, what, which one is that one? Okay. Okay. That fallacy tells you that accept what I'm saying because, and then it leaves the issue and starts what? Uh, invoking pity in you, the hearer. Oh, Auntie Judge, Auntie Judge, I'm a woman like you. <laughs> I said, take care of me, say. You are going to pour acid on someone's daughter. This is also referenced in some of my recordings on that academic channel on YouTube. Eh? You are going to pour acid on someone's daughter. Think about it very well. Because you suspected that she's just, I like the women issues, because sometimes people are so disadvantaged. Think about it very well. Then they arrest you for doing that. The judge sits on the matter. The judge is also a woman. So a girl has been deformed by a disgruntled wife, OK? Who should be confident enough in herself and know that, Charlie, if you want to go and make this happen, you're probably you are losing big time. Me, I'm here. That's that's the real push. It's not that you don't care, but you don't let it hit you. You have, you have to be focused. You go and pass it on someone else. Okay. Then the judge sits on the matter and says, you are sentenced to whatever. I don't know. Let's give a very bad, uh, uh, wicked judge. So you say you are sentenced to death. No, the woman who has gone to that, do that. Turns to the judge, who is also a woman, I told you, and said, Auntie Judge, Auntie Judge, what you are doing, be careful, though. I'm a woman like you. That thing. You are asking for pity. You are, you are invoking pity because she's also a mother, a woman. As soon as you do that, she, her objectivity will be offended. She can't even be objective about the matter. Have you forgotten that the girl is also someone's daughter and she's also a woman like you? When you were pouring the acid, did you say she's a woman like you? Why would you say, look, when the man comes, what he's doing to me, can do that to you. Collect your school fees and everything you need. If it's money, collect, he has plenty. But let him go, he will exploit you. By the time you get a proper guy who will take care of you, he will use you now, Makakongo. The tent will be empty. Mm -hmm. So if it's money you need, get something that you can start some good with, let him go. 
Eh? Mm, me, I'm fine. Okay, my girl, it's really why. Right. If you get you got someone who has wisdom, the embarrassment, what have you, unless those who have who be basically training, they have determined to do that, or you can't do anything about it. But don't go pouring acid. So I'm saying that when you invoke that kind of pity in the judge, what you are doing is me, they have mercy on me. Argument that doesn't give reasons, they invoke pity is what appeal to. Look at that several names it has. Argumentum ad misericordiam from the word misery, misericordia. The Latin, eh? If you are able to do it, it's fine, but I don't think I'm going to ask you for Latins. Now, you can't manage the guy and she have how much more Latin and French in addition. But when you have them, they, they make it a bit more intricate and beautiful. Appeal to emotion, appeal to sympathy, argumentum ad misericordia. Appeal to force was argumentum ad baculum. Uh, the first one was, uh, we haven't done that, so let's move slow. This is the fourth one. Some good examples for you. If you look into any logic test, but you see a, a seminar one, appeal to pity that people often uh, use. They said, a boy kills both of his parents, okay? And then when he's sentenced to death at the court, he says, <laughs> he says please have mercy on me. I'm an orphan. That's appeal to pity. You have killed your parent and you are saying that you should have mercy on him because he's an orphan. Who made you an orphan? We should have pity on you being an orphan. When you inflicted that harm on yourself and we have to seek justice, but there is a, it's a seminar one, like a standard appeal to pity example that is often cited. If you do law, you see it there, okay? So appeal to pity, some examples. Let's have, which is, please read example one and two, then we are good to go. I think example one is relevant. <laughs> Example one, please say, I deserve a better mark than an F for UGRC 150. Look, my parents just got a divorce. If they see that I got an F, they will just blame each other. The fighting will start all over again, and I will be very sad. I think it's self-explanatory. I won't be surprised that Rich got this from some student. You know, people have some fine things they write, okay? In as much as someone can share in the pain, this is not a reason why you 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 deserve. Look at that expression. I deserve a better mark than an F. F is zero to forty-four over hundred. I don't know why. Have, you if someone has walked you through the grading scale, make yourself can you can, you can get Google it and see or, or find our course outlines. Any of the course outlines. I don't know if I put it on. The Sakara one, uh, the UGRC one is quite extensive already. But if you look at any of your course outlines, it's part of course outlines. 80 to 100 is A, but 0 to 44 is F. You earn 44 is almost like getting half of the, if I have 100 oranges and I'm sure I gave you 44 and I took 56, how much difference is it? But I tell you, if you get 44, is an F for every course in the University of Ghana, every course. F for father. <laughs> Think about it very well. You see that it is easier to descend in the grading skill. It is easier to go down than it is easier to climb up. Because for you to get A, which is a perfect score, it's 80 to 100. The difference is 20. But for you to fall down, look at it very well. A zero out to 44. Almost half is still the erasure. If you come to UGRCs, all of them, including this one, even 49, which is an E, it's a reset. People don't know that. What does it mean? It means that whoever sent this thing felt that I deserve a better mark, with a winner, <laughs> better mark than an F for you guys who want. Show us the reason I talk. You didn't mark my question seven, nine, and 10. Each one of them is worth 10 marks. If you put them together, and they were all correct per the marking scheme, and even they, they are straightforward answers. So if you put them together, that's 30 already. If you add it to my 47 that you put there, we give you 43, you put there, we give me an F. I should get 73, say. Mm. Oh, is that so? Yeah, I even did an upward shift of 10 marks for everyone. Hey, you would have had 83, that's A. What did I give you F? I'm sorry, I'll look at it. Okay, 
or vice versa. The reasons may be true or false. You may check and then all the reasons you gave, you did give reasons, just that they don't, uh, they don't lead us to the con. That's different. this one. The person is not giving you reasons. He has left the issue. He's invoking pity. You know, I'm the only woman in the queue. This is an interview team sitting there. The people who won the job at 10, they were all lined up outside. We called them one after the other. When we got to the eighth person, she comes in. All the people who preceded her were men. Two left men, and she's the eighth person. I said, why do you think you qualify for this job? <laughs> That's the lady. I wish you were seeing my face as I do this. <laughs> then she would look down like she wants to clean the face. I have suffered, though. I've suffered pain in my life. What? Bah, auntie, hey, you have suffered. That's why you give them. You don't know that if I'm, me if I'm on the panel, any critical mind sitting there may not even ask a question. All they are doing is checking your critical abilities. You should use your suffering as a strength. What the suffering has made you go to use it as a strength. Don't come and show weakness. You don't, you are not doing welfare committee meeting. The person is there to give you a job, accountant or something. I come to tell them you are suffering. Hey, then I saw half an assist and drop. People will start. I'm the only girl in the queue. All the people there are men. You know, <laughs> my mother cries sick. My mother's friend who takes care of her right now, which was kind, she said, some people have picked her phone. If I don't get this job, I don't know how I'll go. Ah, sister. These are all true. But is that the reason why? Reason why you should get a job? People go for interview and they don't understand. Tell them, why do you think you qualify for this marketing job? Because it's a new product. And we want someone who can really hit the market running with it. He said, oh, I think if it is a marketer you are looking for, then I'm the one you should choose from the, the, the team there. I tell you, the experiences I've had have exposed me to the skill of what dealing with human beings of all kinds. I've sold sugarcane before. I've taken care of a sick mother whilst raising money through orange selling and managing babysitting to raise something. In all these instances, I learned to manage people. Sugarcane sales is quite hectic. You deal with people at the beach. Sometimes some of them are not educated. Some of them are, they can be insulting and what have you. But I have learned how to, you see what I'm doing? So give me a product and give me three months and see how I hit the market running. I'll bring you customers. You don't have a problem. It's the same suffering I'm talking to the people. And if I'm on the panel, anybody else who has a little critical thing like I try to have, you get the job immediately. It is immediate because the person is confident. The person has seen difficulties and has seen, and didn't interpret the difficulty as something that should stagnate her. And then she come, if you don't give me a job, <laughs> I've tried every company. Say, so I don't know. I don't know if it's a demon. Ah, demons. Now what you say? If the demons are there, you are here. If they come with Kambu to where are here? You are there. So don't invoke pity. You'll be committing a fallacy. And oftentimes it doesn't buy. You get help. Maybe you get a transport to get to home or something. The one who comes to raise his head up and say, I am a serious marketer, people. He's speaking to the team. His head is, I wish I could, I could demonstrate for you to see. It's all signs of confidence, signs of someone who will go out there and portray strength so that it will attract people. Like begat, like when you smile, the other person looking at you smiles automatically. They didn't even know. Before they start thinking, ah, this lady, do I know her from some of this brother? Do I know? Why am I smiling at you? But you were smiling. So you also smile. When you yawn, it's infectious. I don't know the science behind that. Those who do science. The person yawns and the next person is yawning. When you are angry, you are moody, it will reflect on the people watching. So the enthusiasm with which you are responding to questions at the interview, rather than the pitiable posturing and, my brother, please, <laughs> you go before me and when you finish, I'll come. Sometimes not crying, sometimes in the language, the demeanor, the posturing, appeal to pity, won't wash. Reasons okay, so some more examples for you. See the jury, mm -hmm. this man, this poor man, these members of the jury, this is a, a, a council member, a lawyer. I'm sure summing his presentation says, Members of the jury, surely you can find it in your heart to acquit the defendant of burglary. 
this poor man has lived his whole life without the benefits most of us take for granted. When he was a kid, his parents never bought him stuff or even gave him a hug. <laughs> that means you want a hug. You won't go and get some roasted corn and coffee broke man and gano be his it's hug, hug you are looking for. He has to fend for himself all these years. That's no news. That's no news. You see, it I'm not belittling the difficulty. We are speaking to someone who has gone through life. This short years that we have on it. We can we can write a story. It is being by the grace of God. Okay? We understand the difficulties of that. But take them as strength. Because you're not dead. I think if it was finished, Anka, you are dead. Those of you who do a little philosophy, you can look at some of my philosophies from Otega. Mm -hmm. Take sins one at a time. This is where you are. You are still alive. Hey, All the good things perhaps he had in mind. What can you do about it? He can do anything. He's in the box. Respectfully, he's inside. Finally, he's gone down. You are alive. You are eating granot and cookies. So you want to kill yourself. And hey, be positive. The situation is that bad, but be positive. And the guy says, surely he's not guilty of this crime. Surely he's not guilty. Because of all these things you say, it can't be a big that. Oh, it is appealing to pity. You have touched on how he has suffered his whole life and nobody bought him anything. Nobody had him. Open hug. Ah, hug is fine. But it's not a reason why we should acquit you when the facts are different. Speak to reason. Leave the emotions. There's a place for emotions. I, I discussed a lot about women and women. There's a place for that. But not when you, we have to acquit someone. You say he has suffered. He has not had hugs. He had to fend for himself or the social. He's not guilty. Really? Okay. Then the last one I'll do for today. And then we can end. Maybe if we do six, then... We have six to do next week, God willing. I think we have to do a makeup. I don't know if it was, you know, Sunday, didn't, didn't miss any. It's the Saturday one. If we do a makeup, then we'll do it generally for everyone. So you do, you all can have an extra one. I'll check and see if that is possible. Five, appeal to the people. Hmm? So you know, appeal to pity, argumentum ad misericordia, argument of misery. You know, appeal to threat or force, argumentum ad baculum, okay, the consequences, the outcomes. You know, what was the other one that we did? Equivocation, you know, secularity. And I think we did, let me see quickly. I think we ended up, and then appeal to pity, what we have just, no, that's the misencodium. So we did appeal to pity, appeal to force. Let's look at them quickly. It's a good way to remember, begging the question, secularity, okay? You know them. I said, name your best friends or your steady mate or something by them. Call one appeal to pity. It's a recording. Call the other one uh, 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 any hypo. appeal to force. Baculum. When you say, Maza, Baculum. How is the course going? I know why. Be you see the other person call that way, then it is always fresh. When you finish the course, throw all away and be at peace. Get your straight A, which I think many of you have so far from the post train. Yes, it's still that are the remnant of Asia. Even if you say good, they are not good. I'm giving them washing still. Maybe I'm quite a I don't know what to do. I don't like feeling people. I don't like father, father. I love my father, but I don't like F for father. Mm -hmm. E for Emmanuel, no. D for Daniel, Ukraine, Papa. It's a past, but it's not good. Get Adam. Mm -hmm. Baby. B, my friend, we said B. <laughs> when you are looking for the B, then baby. Get those so that your, your transcript will look fine. And then when people want to get you into employment or you want to create one, people know that he has evidence of critical ability, can do critical thinking, can think critically about matters. Put him in that office or put him in charge of this or let him organize that or let him creatively reorient our economy. He's a critical, a critical man. This is international relations. Let him lead the team. You know, mediation. Let him do that thing. Not D for Daniel. Never had it. Eh? It won't help you. So have that in mind. And learn for that when you finish your done. That's why I, I am always doing mentoring in addition to the teacher. I don't just do lecture. I can be read that. This one can finish all today. But I, I'm interested in the other parts that sometimes we are silent on. 
Okay, people know book and they don't know, they're not educated. They just know the book, but they're not educated in a way that impacts. You want to avoid that. Okay, so appeal to the people on your screen, grandstanding. The football, uh, the brothers who do football, amongst you know that the grandstand at uh, a grassball stadium, popular stand, that's where plenty of people are. So you see the, it's, the Latin expression is argumentum ad populum, from the word popular. The argument from what? Popularity. It appeals to the masses, although everybody says it is. Therefore, remember the pony, the sister's pony. Remember when I introduced you, I went back to all of them. Please put the pony on my forehead. I will do it for you, my lady. But why? See, everybody is doing it as well. Are you everybody? Have you checked the size of your forehead? Oh, I think I want a limousine wedding, two buffets. I want uh, about three changing of clothing in the day. Uh, the, so the brother has salary, 366 Ghana cities, 10 pesos. You love him. He has vision. He's hardworking. But that is his salary for now. He has some investment here and there. You say you want three limousines, three change of clothing. Then we say, why? Say, oh, but that is what every one girl is doing. Yale and take. Oh, yale. Appeal to the masses. Appeal to consensus on your screen. Band wagon. Grandstanding. Latin expression argumentum at popular. Because a large group of people support something. So it cannot be wrong. You think, therefore, it is right. Some fine examples for you. Manasi Azuri's latest novel sold over a million copies. Therefore, it is so good. That's what you are seeing. That's, that's appealing to the mass. It can sell 100 billion and not be good. A lot of people say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Pontius Pilate didn't know what to do. Hey, you this boy, that you are. Mm. He said, give me water, let me wear this. So I don't know anything about it. Because there was no way around it. The man wished. Too soon, Easter. I'm going to kill him again. Friday, we kill him. Monday, we are at the beach. Hey, Christians. <laughs> we'll cry and we're black. Oh, Jesus, I will not. He is an You know, <laughs> the people groom back people who sing that on Friday. Monday morning, they are at the beach. April, 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 the same people. Hey. Mm. Plenty of people said, crucify him. Agbele, bele, bele. Plenty of people voted four years ago. Plenty of people voted the subsequent year. But every, if it was right, what the majority said, why did they change? So it is not enough to say plenty of people said so. Therefore, that alone makes it right. It is something about what the plenty of people said you should look at. I told you that earlier. Is the product durable? Maybe it's the durability that is attracting people there. Then your reason for going there is not because plenty of people follow it, but because the product is durable. If you say that we are happy, but don't tell us, hey, we'll be happy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My Peace FM folks have stopped it. Maybe once in a while, if I don't listen to the radio, I, I watch it. Peace FM, we'll be happy, yeah, 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 yeah. If everybody says so, that includes the one who doesn't know what is good. Obia, everybody says it's an everybody says so syndrome appealing to the masses and others for you to look at. You think I can do the last? So some are more examples. See that? See, see this guy? But officer, I don't deserve a ticket. This is a, a foreign setting. A ticket meaning you have been caught, you know, uh, with a traffic offense, either a jam traffic or something. So the police has come and given you a ticket. Like uh, Canada, we don't do tickets. That's why I don't know how to explain. But I think people get it. The guy says, but I don't deserve a ticket. Everyone goes this speed. And then we'll be a baby. He <laughs> said, if I went any slower, I wouldn't be going with a stream of traffic. This The second part is not the issue. The issue is what he said before this. Everyone goes this speed. Obi Aibi, everybody does have. Why is that my way of coming? Massa, you're appealing to the popular, the popular view. The popular view may not be right. So the fact that everybody does something doesn't in itself mean it is right. I would end with this. Bear with me, eh? So that we do half six, then we can all go home and have our Sunday to ourselves. 
ad hominem fallacy. Fallacy ad hominem. The fallacy of the man, homo sapiens, hominem. Mm? So from man, the fallacy, the argument that attacks the man, the person. There are two ways of attack. The positive attack, which we call eulogistic, to eulogize, praise, eulo. It starts with E, you look at. Oh dear, let me find the eulogist. Uh -huh. That is it. So the eulogizing one is the second one on your screen. Please look at it. When you praise, okay, so you say, let's accept it. Because of then you praise things about the person. Not the issue. You leave the issue, you discuss the person. That's ad hominem fallacy. Whether you're logistic or dislogistic, you have left the issue being discussed. You are discussing the person or the circumstances of the person connected to the issue. So I don't think we should give this brother another chance in this job. We see why. He said, oh, but his brother is that thief that has been arrested. Ah, if my brother has been arrested, what has he got to do with it? God forbid that, but think about it. Oh, this guy, I didn't think we should give him that job. Why? He comes from so and so region. Even the language he speaks. Ah. Yesterday, I saw him with that woman that sells so and so over there, his daughter. What has it got to do with the issue we are discussing? I think we should switch off the fan. The room is a little cold. So I don't think we should switch it off. Why? So this girl, she likes, she obviously she wants to be in charge. You have come to class to learn to switch off and switch off. We, we shouldn't switch it off. Oh, my brother, <laughs> I have a big problem. Why should we, shouldn't we switch it off? That's the question. You have left the fan discussion. You are talking about the girl who proposed that we switch it off. She, she thinks that she went to Achimota. Oh, she thinks that she went to Mfantimangas. Eh? So everything, we should listen to them. We will not switch off any fan. Say, continue to do. Ah, I thought you would say, oh, if you switch it off, the room will be hot because the levers don't work. So if you could get, I need it. Can you sit at the back? That place, the fan will reach there so that it doesn't disturb you because we need it. That's reason, reason. You say, no, 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 no. We shouldn't switch it off. Yeah. Why? No reason. The lady, that spoke yesterday in the class, she did the same. She thinks that she's the boss of this class or something. Every day she wants to be giving instructions for people to follow. I dream, sir, bra. It's ad hominem, this logistic. Don't accept the view. So you give negative and detracting, uh, you know, uh, claims about the person in order to prevent us from accepting the view. So the negative one is the dislogistic. The positive, oh, let's accept what Dr. Miles is saying. Oh, Dr. Miles, okay, let's use someone else. I think we should listen to what the sister said. The sister who said we should switch off the fan. We say why, I say, oh, that sister, she's very beautiful. And I think I see her in, on the news. And they go for evangelism. Her t-shirt is always nice on her body. She, she ah, fun. All the things you are saying are praiseworthy. Yes, but they are not connected to the you let the issue by discussing the person. It's still an attack. So ad hominem. But this one is what? Eulogistic. You eulogize the person. The other one is what? Dislogistic. You see, I mentioned you cook. You are another. You too. Like when I say you are a thief, they tell me you too. That fallacy still attacks the person. That tells me I shouldn't lie. He says lying is wrong because it makes people stop trusting one another. But I've heard my dad lie. <laughs> hey, rich one, Sometimes he calls in sick to work when he isn't really sick. So lying isn't actually wrong. You see that? The person, the person is saying, he's telling me I shouldn't lie, but he's a worst liar. It means you admit that you are a liar. Yes, that he too, too cook. You are another, it's a, it's, the two cook is French, I think. You are another. So see the name of that fallacy, connected to ad hominem. It's still a type of ad hominem fallacy. You are attacking the man, the father in this instance. How? By telling him, you, what you claim that I am, you two are like that. So you have left the issue that you are a thief. You are saying, even if I'm a thief, you mind that you too, or if I'm a liar, you mind that you too, you are a liar. So it's called you too. Look who is talking. Like, if we are looking for someone to come and judge you, you hear that a lot with the politicians. I will tell them, hey, Auntie O'Brien, 
that if we didn't have problem with the other one, why would we bring you? When we tell them, oh, you the one speaking, you too. That's two coke fallacies, a type of Adam and Eve. He says, look who is talking. I want someone better to come and tell me it is not you. Because you, dear, if I'm a thief, you are a, a thief double. Okay, so don't say something. It's still a fallacy called Chikuk, and it's one of the dyslogistic fallacies like of Adomen. Okay, so the summation, and then I take questions and we are done. One, I've done six. You know, from our beginning, we had 12. That should tell you we have patiently and you have comported yourself so well that I wish I could give every one of you one mark if I had the ability to fish you all out. It's a very good. Class, I think last the last time to the other group did say we have done equivocation for your screen, we've done begging the question. It has other names, so by now it should be coming. You don't have an answer. Remember the Bible, God existing. Yeah. So it's secularity, remember. You can also call it petitio principi. Then we just did example three, appeal to force, argumentum ad baculum. The sister who wants the brother to marry. Otherwise, she won't get a job. Yeah, the brother won't get a job. The consequence, you are using the outcomes to the secretary that must finish typing. Otherwise, consider herself fired. All oh, those examples, the boy that must bath, else he needs. These are all force, appeal to force. Then we saw appeal to pity. A sister who says she must get a job, but she has suffered. The orphan, who is an orphan by his own making, and is now pleading that no, don't, Sentence here, I'm only an orphan. Appeal to pity and all the others I give. Then appeal to the people or appeal to the masses at argumentum at what? Populum. Grandstand. Remember, across post stadium, the popular stand is called the grandstand. The French folks are more grand, big. So a stand that is big has a lot of people. All that to tell you. Appeal to the what masses, appeal to the people, appeal to consensus. Although do not say plenty of people have agreed on this. We have consensually, like you say, this an ad, excuse me, uh, argumentum ad populum fallacy. And then the last one we did for today, example six, uh, number six is what argumentum ad hominem. We saw the eulogistic one and the dyslogistic one. Each one of them is ad hominem because it leaves the issue. And discusses the person. Okay, we are so it is attacking the person. The attack may be a positive attack. You say, oh, almost to embarrass the person or a negative one. And then in between, we saw a type of what at hominem that is what she will cook, you are another, you too, see who is talking, kind of reasoning. Instead of giving a response to whether you are what they say you are, so you too, you are another. Ad hominem fallacy, the chill cook one. I am so that when we meet, God willing, next week, whether I come or the tutor, your tutor was coming today, but I had to respond to, you know, family concerns of a kind, so he couldn't come to Sequenza. No, Sequenza was supposed to go for Mr. Okansi's class, and then Sedon would have taken mine today, but because Sequenza couldn't go, why am I putting all this on record? Just so you know, okay? So we had to do a swap so that I can have my link and then so cancel the link uh, set on. So hopefully next week, one of the tutors will, will take over that seven and all, working with the three of us. Okay, we'll take over and wrap up nicely on the seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. By then we hope that you would have done your own reading around it. So when the person comes, it's easier uh, for us to, make meaning. You will see unit six, seven, nine, and 10, your final exam. Those who don't read anything, unit six, seven, nine, and 10. Unit six is on deduction and induction. I want to put that also on the record. Unit seven is on inductive reasoning in the sciences and everyday life. Unit eight won't come in the exam because we haven't even studied it. It's in the test, but we don't need it for this semester and the year before, okay? Then unit nine, causal reasoning. Post hoc, ego propter hoc, and the, and the other fallacies there, okay? Jess Mills is uh, four methods of causal reasoning, et cetera, et cetera. The various connotations of the word cause, that's unit nine. And then what we are doing now is unit 10. You will have something in the format that is saw in the eye. 
that the content will be exam. So we hope that either way you do. Thank you very much. I stop the recording and take your questions if there are any. Oh dear. Thank you, Ellen. I like that.